The Quick Change Collab, hosted by Teresa B. DIY, a playlist full of reversible or changeable decor. Links to Teresa's channel and the playlist are in the description box. Finding new decor with every season change can be expensive. It'd be nice to have some pieces that were reversible or you could change out a few things and you'd be set for the next season. In this video, I'll be sharing four DIYs that you can either reverse or change something out and you'll be set for the next season. Please enjoy the entire playlist and go over to Teresa B's channel and check out her wonderful farmhouse and shabby chic DIYs. After removing the rope, I used spackle from Dollar Tree to fill in the holes and then proceeded to try to remove the sticker that was on the back. It was a little tough, so I used a wet towel and then a paint scraper to peel it off and a little bit of Goo Gone for any residual sticky residue. <laughs> I did a dry fit around the board with the tower blocks to see how the frame would look and if I would need to make any cuts. I then started to attach my tower blocks with Gorilla Wood Glue. I did a dry fit of my corner piece and marked where I needed to cut for both the left and right side on the bottom. Using the Dremel, I cut two pieces of tumbling tower block so that I could complete the frame for the chalkboard. With the pieces cut, I completed making the frame. I used wood filler around the entire frame and then sanded it. I used Prang Brown Tempera to color the wood like a stain. With the trim color dry, I attached feet to the bottom using two tumbling tower blocks and wood glue. Then I added wood filler to the attached feet. Then I took the wood that will be holding the chalkboard up and placed it in the back just to mark where I needed to permanently attach it. Then I attach a hinge with Gorilla Glue. And I used um, clear grip Gorilla Glue and just a little bit of hot glue to attach my wooden kickstand piece so that my chalkboard would stand up. And then I just dabbed a bit of black chalkboard paint over the spots where the spackle is. With the chalkboard finished, I used a base piece of Velcro to attach to the top so that I could switch out my bows for each season. Off camera, I assembled bows using these various ribbons for the different seasons. With the bows complete, I used Velcro to attach a piece to the back of each of them so they can be swapped out on the top of the chalkboard. And here are all the completed bows, including an everyday burlap one with polka dots. Good for an entryway or a kitchen. 
Tell me what do you think? To get this truck started, I'm using tumbling tower blocks and to see how I need to have them situated to get the truck fully built out. So I'm going to glue down my tumbling tower blocks. I end up using five and that craft stick fit the area better than a tower block. So I end up using three craft sticks cut down to the height of the tumbling tower blocks to finish that front portion out. It's a bit out of frame, but here I'm measuring the craft stick to the top of the tumbling tower blocks. I glued the three snipped pieces together, and when they're dry, then I secure them to the portion of tower blocks already glued down to the part of the sign. I take another craft stick and cut it to the same height as the three that I just glued down and attach it to those. This will be the support for the hood. Then I measure out the sticks that will be used for the hood and total it'll be four and a quarter pieces. I glue down the initial hood piece and then I make like a, a fence panel and attach the other pieces to that. Once the panel portion was dry, I attached that with Gorilla Glue, and then there was just the tiniest sliver of a piece that needed to be attached to the panel, and I just went ahead and snipped that from a bit of a craft stick. I use a paint scraper to pop off these 3D pieces so that I could flip them over and use them on the reverse side. And Dollar Tree must have used E6000 because these things were hard to get off. After sanding, I wanted to go ahead and get these pieces attached. So I did a dry fit to see that both signs would line up properly. And then I used Gorilla Wood Glue to attach to the outline portion that I had built up with my craft sticks and my tumbling tower blocks and laid the opposite sign on top so that I could get a really good hold. I used a small crate to attach for the back portion of the bed of the truck. And then I used just um, a paper clamp to make sure that there was a secure bond between the wood sign and the crate. Then I used a giant craft stick to measure and complete the roof. I use my Dremel to sand down portions of the truck to get them smooth and ready for the wood filler so that they would look more rounded.
Then I moved on to reattaching the pieces I had removed from the opposite side to give the truck definition. With the gray nail dry, I'm going to use metallic silver, black, and then white with a chippy brush to achieve a faux galvanized finish. using this silver diamond wrap to give some definition to the grill. I can't use silver paint because I've already used that for the galvanized portion and it would just blend in. A small craft stick is used to measure the size for the front bumper and then I paint that silver. I use iridescent gemstones for the headlights. And I'm using a small piece of Velcro to attach to the door so I can swap out my signs for each season. Magnets would be ideal, but I don't have any. And here's my truck for all seasons, all finished. Tell me what you think. I'm starting out with two three feet pieces of baluster and I have two pieces that were cut from a previous project. They are about uh, 12 inches long. So those will be the rungs in my ladder. To start assembling my pieces, I started out with these L brackets and I thought I needed these to make the ladder really sturdy and secure, but since I won't be having anything heavy on it, I moved to using these longer um, outdoor wood screws just to secure the pieces from the outside, and that seemed to work. With the ladder assembled, I moved inside to using scrapbook paper and wood slats. I picked four pieces of paper that would represent each of the seasons and then outlined the wood slats onto the paper. I marked where I needed to drill through the Dremel to go ahead and drill through both pieces at once so that I could hang them with these metal hooks. I glued the paper down according to the seasons, spring, summer on one slat and then fall, winter on the other. I used part of a garden welcome sign as a stencil. I podged over both sides of the signs. I used my Dremel to put two holes in the planter so I could attach zip ties and then attach the planter to the ladder. These signs look great. I love the scrapbooking paper. I don't know why I thought it would work, but they're too small for the ladder. An old Easter sign, chopped it up, went through the whole process again, and these are my new and improved signs.
this size works much better for the latter. I can just swap my signs out with each season, leave the neutral flowers or switch out the contents like I did with these pumpkins and spruce it up for the next season. Taking eight tumbling tower blocks vertically, four on the top, four on the bottom, all glued together with Gorilla wood glue. Once the glue is dry on the initial eight pieces, I attach a smaller piece that I cut when I was making the chalkboard frame. Attach that with Gorilla Glue as well. When that sets up, I use my Dremel tool to make a hole in that handle piece so that I can attach a piece of twine through it. Then I attach the sanding paper attachment and I knock down the edges just to make them a little rounder. Then I rubbed in a bit of wood filler and then I cut a few pumpkins out of some scrapbooking paper. I used ivory chalk paint on both sides of the cutting board. Then I cut gather from this rub on transfer sheet. I wanted to add a bit of fall color to the cutting board and I thought just a little bit of this gingham ribbon and a few of these paper pumpkins would be a cute rustic touch. I used Aileen's tacky glue to apply them all to the board. And for the reverse side, I'm using stamps. I'm putting a cross at the top and then using small alphabet stamps to spell out believe. just a little bit of this ribbon at the bottom I thought would be the perfect pop of color. Reversible tear tray decor to go from fall pumpkins right into Christmas. And here's a look back at my other projects. I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoy the playlist.